this is TV, it's TV in a scale that is beyond anything else. It's the most successful TV show in the world right now. It is special. It's very, very special. Today, we're shooting in Croatia. We're shooting in Belfast. And they're preparing for shooting in Seville, down in Spain. Whatever hand you're dealt, you have to go with it, because the show can't stop. I think we're the only ones in the world that shoot with two units at the same time all season long. If one of those spokes in the wheel are missing, it's going to collapse. And action! Morning. How are you all? My name is Duncan Mugich, and I'm the UK line producer for Croatia and Spain, or what we also call the southern locations, for Game of Thrones season five. This is my second season. I did Croatia last year, and this year we've obviously got Spain thrown into it as well, so I'm line producing both of them this year. And even though last year was big, this one's even bigger. My name is Chris Newman. I'm one of the producers on Game of Thrones. I fulfill a function here of planning how the two units work and drift in between the sets, the locations, and the different countries. So how was yesterday, all right? Yes. yes. Yeah, it was good. good. It was good. really good, yeah. We start shooting at the end of July. 99% of the crew have been here before. So when you start day one, it feels like day 301 in a good way. As this is going on here, over in Spain, uh, we have Peter, who uh, runs Fresco Films. He's new to this year, so he doesn't know quite how manic it can get. My name is Peter Welter Soler. I'm the Spanish line producer on this show. The production booklets so are we getting them tonight. We have two weeks left before everybody arrives, and then two days later, we start shooting. I'd be lying if I said the stress level is not increasing, because obviously this is very important for all of us. Doing it for the first time, we want to please everybody, we want to do a great job. This is actually maybe not the calm before the storm, it is the rehearsal before the show. <laughs> We are heading from our unit base into Dubrovnik, into the old town. Filming here is, is quite different from filming in Belfast because the logistics of it here are very different. One of the logistical problems of Dubrovnik is it's such a tight, small old city that we can't get our big vehicles actually into the town just because the streets are so narrow. It's just one of the challenges that we face filming in a, in a city like this. can't take vehicles within the old walls. So everything has to get taken by Sherpas up to a location today, which is probably one of the furthest and trickiest you could get to in the whole city. A little rule that I have for myself on location on this is never go up empty-handed or come down empty-handed. Now it's just a load of stairs all the way up to the top. The principal actors are just arriving on set to rehearse. They will do a rehearsal with the director first and then they'll do a full crew rehearsal, which is when they'll place where the cameras are gonna go and everything like that. Hey, Joseph, how are you? Nice to see you. Episode one and two have been in Croatia. They've done most of their filming and they're back here finishing up now that uh, Amelia is finished in Croatia. <laughs> <laughs> Do that, just growl at one point. So this morning, episode one and two with uh, Mike Slovis directing are setting up to do their first scene this season in uh, Danny's penthouse. Morning, everybody. Hello. So it's uh, right at the beginning of the uh, season five, and it's the first time Danny gets an inkling of what's going on in uh, Marine under her new rule. And then do you want it to be a boom, I've decided... I will not have them. Or do you want it to be kind of be like a... No, I think it's more gentle. It's gentle. It is yeah, gentle. Yeah, okay, lovely. So. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I have shot mostly in Belfast. I have shot uh, several days in Croatia, and I'm going to shoot in Seville. Teach them a better way. It sounds like something Jora would have said. Moving to a foreign country on this show is not as disruptive as you might think because one of the two crews that you've already worked with here goes there. So the first thing that happens when you walk on the set is that you see familiar faces. My priority today is looking after Amelia because she's come from Croatia. So we're matching continuity to that country. They send their photos to us so that we can do the same as they've been doing. There's two departments filming at the same time, so it's imperative that things like wigs, continuity photos, um, all travel together and that every member of the team is aware of what the look is because if we do have to take over someone's artist, we know exactly what we're doing and there's no mess-ups when we're watching the show, hopefully. <laughs> Let's do one for camera, please. Okay. Let's have it quiet for rehearsal, please. And that means everybody in here, thank you. Action. So the only thing that gave him pride was knowing there was someone lower than he was. Morning. Morning. Good. Morning, Duncan. Morning. Morning, Ms. McGuck. Oh, I want to talk to Peter today, or maybe you can. Peter Wilton. Yeah, no, I'm talking about Cordova Bridge and the drone. I talked as far as I'm concerned, Bernie is Game of Thrones. I've never met a producer that cares for a crew as much as she does. She's a she's an incredible woman to work for, actually, and everybody loves her. And she keeps everything together. And do they want to clear place and that so the bridge has to be closed? That's I'm checking on. Along with David and Dan, she's the executive producer. David and Dan are obviously, you know, they're the creators of it, it's their baby. Bernie is the one that keeps this show running. Sometimes uh, David and Dan will be with us. Sometimes they are separate so that they can both be on the set depending what the scene might be. We'll watch rehearsal, give their notes on the scene, and then a lot of times we're discussing what is in advance, as you can imagine, with 10 episodes that we're constantly prepping. Much like our characters, we will go from the, the amazing Dasnick right into the amazing Hard Home. I usually have a nice list for them every day. They almost cringe when they see me starting to come towards them and open my book to start asking my questions, but they're fantastically collaborative with all of us. Today they're having a big Hard Home meeting up in Belfast, mm -hmm. and... They got the notes? Yes. Good. Yeah. When we're shooting in different countries, it's about a constant communication between the producers in each country. I'm gonna follow Nutter over to Spain early. Yeah. You're staying here through Ilario, right? Well, are we doing a charter to Sevilla? We are, yes, yeah. but I'm gonna leave ahead of time. Yeah, which goes on the 8th. I'll, pro I'll go in the charter this time. So. Yeah. There'll be a seat for you. Seat you can have Bernie's seat. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right. In a week, we will all take off in a charter to go to Spain, and that is now starting to come very close. After they have their big scout today, then we'll have more information to go off of for that. We're in the royal palaces of Seville called the Real Alcázar, which are palaces built by Peter the Horrible in the 13th century. It's one of the most visited monuments in Spain. The Alcázar will be like the water gardens of Dorne. Since Dorne is a new world that's just come into the show, it was introduced in the fourth season, but we didn't really see it. Now in the fifth season, they will finally get to see the kingdom of Dorne. Buenos dias. Good morning. Once again. It is difficult to shoot in a place like that because it was obviously not built as a set, but built for a purpose, a different purpose than ours. Yeah. Some of the places, as you've seen the balcony, for instance, I mean, you can't possibly get some of the gear up there because the staircase is too narrow, so we have to get a crane in, Genie Booms cranes, platforms, in order to hover that material up there. It's tricky. Uh, okay. It's not like a back lot studio shoot. First and so second shooting days up here, and then we move down to the garden. We'll get control of the garden, I'm assuming. As far as you told me, we have the entire garden area for us, correct? Yeah, so how this enough? Yeah, we're pretty amazing. They have like an average of 8,000 tourists in here every day. To see it like empty and have it just for us, it's just a privilege. Wherever you go, there's always going to be 
a challenge because you're in a new place both culturally and logistically. We'll have to find a compromise where we can work together with the palace. Where sort of foreigners coming into their country trying to put this project together. I have to say they're being extremely nice, which is, so we need to make sure that our, which they always are, but our crew are very yeah, careful with this careful. delicate location. And what they're doing for us is unique as well. It's exactly. never been locked off like this for anybody. All right, so we go and check sure. the others, because okay. I think we're running a bit yeah, late now. Behind. We're now driving up to um, a little village called Macamorn, in which there is a, a quarry that's been there for a number of years now. And in season one, we built the set of Castle Black there. Because there's a lake in the quarry within season two, we built the battlements of King's Landing for the Battle of Blackwater with Stannis's boats attacking. It's still standing, although it's, it's looking a bit worn these days. Now we're driving up to have a look at a set which is mid-construction of a fishing village set north of the wall. We'll begin to see how that's taking shape this morning. The set that we've seen down here, it's a fishing village that is a, a protected fishing village. It's not a military establishment. It was designed to be somewhere where people had a living off the sea. So we needed the water, which is why we put it on the edge of the, the reservoir here. The fantastic thing about the hard home set is we're building something that is so far north this time that what we get to do is create a fishing village that is exactly as the name describes. It's hard home. What we've been doing both in concepts and in models is looking at the location out in Magramorn and created what we need for the action, which is a longhouse in which a lot of action takes place. And then we have the landing area, which we're able to use the lake that exists in Magramorn. And so through having those sort of necessary requirements, we can then build this sort of tent city that uh, will be created out there. Yeah. So I had this good idea, which I'll need to pitch, I guess, which is to hold on to that shot. The director can there. now see the bones of the whole set. So he's going to walk through the set and start mapping out where all the things that he's imagined will take place. If the plan to do that shot is it's Laboda's point of view, so it's looking through the fence. So anything at this point that the director would like to change, this is the time that he has to turn around and say, well, could I put the door on the hut over here? And could I have this a bit higher or so on? Good. So, yeah, are we, we good with this? Yeah. Yeah. Rock and roll, so... Shall we have a look at this, look at this edge Let's. here and see if that works? Game of Thrones is a big event, and what you mustn't do uh, is, is get put off by the bigness of it. The thing to do is to come in and, and say, all I've got to worry about is the 16 by 9. What's in that frame? It must be like uh, parachuting. Don't worry about the height you're jumping. Just make sure the parachute works. Today we've got about 128 extras out and then everything that goes with that, which is the extra hair people, makeup people, costume people that have to deal with all of that. Crowds start dressing about 5 o'clock this morning and then just in conjunction with hair and makeup, we're just sort of working around each other and then everybody travelled to set about 7.30 to be on set for 8. Just need to take your blankets off, guys, so we can look at your costumes, please. Mark Mylord is the director, and he's now going to select the extras that he wants to feature in the scene. Yep, this gentleman, and one of the lady. It changed a bit this morning because people had to look a bit poorer than we'd originally intended. I'd just like to maybe darken a, a couple of teeth or something, yeah, maybe yeah. teeth black, and just one or two of those. Um, and maybe, a, actually, the skin's pretty good. Um, just a little less healthy. And so it was a bit of a scramble, trying to get everybody broken down enough to look a bit poorer than they had done. And it's still happening. People are still getting dirtied up as we speak. Thank you, guys. Brilliant. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. We had more than 86,000 applications to be a background extra in the show. People from not only all over Spain, but all over Europe, even from California, from Argentina, from South Africa, wanting to come to the casting, wanting to be part of Game of Thrones. Hello. How are you? Good. Peter? Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Buenas tardes. Oh, buenas tardes. 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 Buen
Maybe he just got up, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a siesta. OK, then uh, it's good morning again. <laughs> There's going to be about 1,000 costumes to do 600 extras. Because it's such a major operation, we're doing something like 50, 60 fittings a day, which normally we do 30. We fit everybody here, males, females, in and out. We do guards, slaves. There's, there's a rogue slave. There's a slave over there. <laughs> hello, hello, slave. They process down here, and these guys put on the hair. Tina puts on makeup, and they do their magic. We're moving around very quickly. We're shooting in three or four different places, all straight after each other. But we like have to go in advance and prep six, seven hundred people all ready for a camera that moves behind us. We basically said here, I like when things are just smooth. We've got Lena Headey and Jonathan Price today. We're shooting a scene here from episode three, which is what we're calling the soup kitchen, which is a kind of rundown area of behind the set of Baylor. And it's a scene where Cersei is looking to have a conversation with a high sparrow, who is a whole new character. We've got a beautiful courtyard, which is actually a former convent, and uh, we are disguising it with a lot of awnings and a lot of ground cover on the floor and it's supposed to be a really shocking place where Cersei encounters the poverty that she has managed to ignore for most of her time living in King's Landing. I'm standing there looking butch and macho. I do a lot of that. Like it's just that about. That's it. That's it. No, that's it. If I jiggle, I sound like jingle bells, so I can't actually move. I'm not allowed to move. I have to stand still. From walking about, we're in every street there is. It's only started a few days ago, so we haven't been here long enough yet to really cause chaos, but it'll come. Dubrovnik is understandably a big tourist attraction, so you're normally fighting through, fighting through the crowds. That's been a difficulty on the sets. Rolling, nice and quiet. The shit has a slim on you. Roll camera. Rolling. Position. 17 lentil, take one, see marker on there. Action. I don't think this is a good idea, Your Grace. Nonsense, man. These are deeply religious people. Where can I find the high sparrow? Cut, cut. I don't believe you did that. Are you all right? Said, we're on strike. No, we're on strike. Fuck you. Fuck. You get into the fucking pelican. See how you like it. Cut. <laughs> I can't even lift, I can't lift my arm. Hit it's me, like come on. Mix. You think you're fucking tough? Come on. Come on, harder. Harder. Come on, harder. Belfast remains the heart of the, the whole thing. It's a major city, so we have all the things that a, a big film crew need, but, you know, you drive 20 minutes out of the city and you're in the heart of the countryside. It helps with the ancient feel of the show that the landscape has a feeling of being old. It's been worn down and uh, eroded, and everything has that ancient feel to it, no matter where you go. You know, the woods feel old, uh, the, the cliff tops feel old, and, um, the moorlands certainly look old, you know. I always like to go to the set every day because that's, that's been my heart. And I, this is my 40th year in the film business, and my heart has always been in making a film. I've always loved the set. You can always kind of tell how the day is going by the way Chris is standing and um, looking at everyone around set. <laughs> I, have, I have no idea. Some of them look at my face and think if it's looking very long, we must be in trouble, but that's not the case. I might be thinking about something entirely different. <laughs> I always find him very calm and very relaxed, given that he's producing this massive, epic show. Uh, we shoot this year 120 days, but in those 120 days, we do shoot two units, so you double it. You're effectively shooting 240 days of screen time. To 
today on set, I'm mostly concerned with the Valyrian. We have a scene with the Valyrian language in. So I'm looking after the actors and making sure that they feel comfortable with the lines. Because some of the sounds are quite tricky to, to get through. All right, guys, here we go. Shooting. Roll cameras, please. Rolling. Roll cameras. Act. I didn't conquer them, their own people did. Dal yelon yet shamirosh or shiglis. Separ torkiroso unagon gerenion ponte vi pilvulsa. Find the men who did this and bring them to me. Right now, we are in a town called Asuna, and it has this beautiful old bull ring, and it's a national monument as well. When we walked into this bull ring, it was just, you know, the place they were looking for. The stone is quite similar to the stone they have shot in Croatia. We made some great progress. Yeah. This does not have to be a bull ring. It needs to be something completely different, and that's why we need to transform it into that place. Yeah. Building the balcony where the actors are going to go to the ground. We had to cover up all the pillars. There will be a lot of things added to that. We're shooting just one single scene in here, and it's 12 days. It's quite complex. There's a lot of action happening, and we need that time. The pressure is so high to meet the expectancies of what is involved in there, which is incredible. Thank you very much. That's a wrap for today. If I could ask people just to clear the cameras, clear the lighting equipment. Here was a very stable, interesting day for the character Daenerys. And then, of course, we had the big trip out to uh, see the set of Hardhome, and it did open up a lot of questions, which will continue to be looked at in weeks to come. You do the best you can, get everything as ready as you can, and then you cross your fingers. Today went very well. We finished our work. David and Dan were happy, which is always my goal of the day when they come out with a smile. Chris and I will talk and compare notes. Another two days down. That's the beauty of shooting two units oh, every yeah. day. It's the only job that can live two days in one. <laughs> yeah, at the moment, the main thing I'm thinking about is getting out of Croatia. We've got a lot of stuff to move to Spain, so that's where all my thought is going at the moment. And obviously trying to set up Spain at the same time. Yeah. And getting through every day of filming. <laughs> and knowing that there's big scenes coming up. Yeah. So it doesn't stop? No, it doesn't stop, no. Every day there are things that you don't expect. Not having shot with any of the crew before obviously increases the stress level. Hello, Croatia. Hello, Spain. So, how's it all going? As much as the shooting date is moving closer and everybody's aware more and more of the fact that we have less time, yeah, stress level is increasing. Definitely, definitely. Production arriving in the past 10 days was actually very good. There was a lot of people rolling up. There's probably 450 people working behind the camera. All right, cameras, please. And background action. The first day of shooting is always crucial to us because it shows us if everything we did in order to, to prepare it was the right thing. Belfast has got some big sets like Hard Home, and the art department and construction have done a really great job of turning what was a notion into reality. 